Good afternoon, and welcome to Denali National Park, Denali live stream Park. events. Good We're very happy to have you here Sorry. again. We are happy to have you here. Sorry. We're happy to have you here in Denali events. We have just a quick technical thing. Should we mute her? Just a quick technical thing. Okay. There we go. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, guys. Um, once again, very happy to be with you tonight, live stream events. We will have our live captioning being streamed through our Facebook page. You can feel free to read on all of the talkings we're going to do with our guests today. Um, as well, if you have any questions for our lovely guests, please feel free to post them on our Facebook page. We can ask her all that we would like to know about her amazing paintings and photography she's done while she's been in the area. These programs will be archived on our page, on our website, as well as on our Facebook page. You can feel free to find that link so you can go back and see these events in the past. You can see the ones that we're doing today, but also, of course, the one we've been doing all summer long. Probably have about four more events that we're going to have for the rest of the summertime. Should we? Okay, so we're going to keep on going. We're going to have just small technical event, um, events. Don't even worry about it. Um, first off, let me introduce who we have here today. Once again, we're going for our artist in residence program. We have Linda Ifante Lyons. It's very yeah, nice, great nice to, to have you here, here Linda. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So yeah. we've been exploring our, our artist in residence program for the past um, few events we've been having. We have some amazing artists that are here. And I've realized I've never actually let everyone know that the moment that we see these artists in residence is actually a pretty important day for them. It's the very same day they're getting out of the backcountry after being for 10 days in the backcountry in their cabins, staying in this remote wilderness. It's also the exact same day that they do their artist program, their outreach program here inside of the park. So before we actually get to know Linda a little bit more, let's talk about what she's been doing just for this past two hours. She's been working with all of our visitors directly here inside of the park doing her artist outreach program, something that every single artist in residence participates in. So Linda, what was your outreach program that you did today? Well, I did a uh, painting demo and I brought out my plein air gear, which is um, my painting um, easel and all the gear that I would use outside if I was um, taking my, my work outside. And um, just uh, talked about oil painting um, and working, working outside, uh, landscape painting, how to, um, how to look at this huge landscape, um, the entire park, and try to condense it down into a, a smaller uh, piece. And uh, so, you know, coming up with a, a composition, uh, working with the, uh, the mediums, just, just a you know, real general um, demo. Um, of, of oil painting uh, out in the field. So oil painting is the number one style um, besides photography that Linda participates in and she's actually mm -hmm. very knowledgeable in teaching others because it's something that she does for her profession. You're a teacher, is that correct? Um, yeah, I, I teach uh, oil, oil painting ba yeah. basically, yes, if, in my studio. And where do you do that at? Okay, well I, I'm from Anchorage. I um, have a studio in a neighborhood called uh, Mountain View and uh, yeah, I have a nice, nice big studio, and that's um, basically where I, I teach, teach my painting. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, you're raised in Anchorage, is that correct? Yes. You're from that area, you're from Alaska? Yep, yep. Uh, raised, raised in uh, Anchorage. Um, my family is, is, everyone is in Anchorage, um, most of my family. And um, yeah, local, local girl. <laughs> <laughs> so is, have you been to Nali often, being in Anchorage? Do you, did you come up as a little girl I, with your I family? Did. I did. I came as a child, and um, later when my, um, my children were younger, um, we came out to, to uh, Denali. Um, but it has been a different experience being here uh, much later and, and uh, after so many years of, of being an artist. And uh, the park is, was awesome when I was you know, a kid, but it's uh, even more so with, with the eyes of, 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 a, of a painter, of an artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a great thing to bring up. Do you look for different aspects of the park and the wildlife, the scenery, um, compared to whenever you're young, visiting as a, as mm -hmm. a young child with your family, perhaps just looking for adventure, for going off to these wild right, places? Right. What do you look for as an adult with that artist eye? Okay. Well, um, I basically, I, I, I'm focused on painting the landscape. So, so Denali was just a, was like a, a candy store for a landscape painter. There's so many um, varieties of, of, of shape and color and form. And, and atmosphere and light, it's, it's a constant um, sort of uh, changing and shifting um, scenery. And, and pretty unusual, the landscape itself is, um, you know, I've traveled a lot through Alaska and I've, I've never seen anything like this. 
uh, the mountains and the gorges, the rivers, the uh, very unusual uh, yellows and oranges and uh, you know, yeah. almost desert, desert colors. That's true, that's mm -hmm. true. Um, where your cabin was located while you were here mm -hmm. for your 10 days is next to a really beautiful landscape mm -hmm. right there. Gorgeous. Yeah, yeah so gorgeous. what is your cabin located next to that you're spent looking outside of every single day? Uh, well, it's, it's located not too far from, from East Fork um, River, and it's one of these wide tributaries with these braided, you know, braided um, streams. So it's, it's gorgeous. And then you, you look out, um, out to uh, the Polychrome Pass, and you can pick up some of the mountains on Polychrome. It's um, basically where you would start the, the climb into Polychrome. So I can see the, the river, I can see the, the mountains, mm -hmm. uh, sunrise, sunset, yeah. and you see, you see it all from, from that cabin. It's really nice. Yeah, that polychrome mountain chain that's to your western mm -hmm. side from right. your East Fork cabin. Um, polychrome, of course, is, has that name because of the multiple colors that are inside of that beautiful mountain range mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. So while you were here for your 10 days, were you inspired mostly by one particular type of landscape? Did you prefer that lovely river bar aspect that right in front of your cabin? Did you like the, the mountains the most, those um, tundra landscapes? What was your favorite mm -hmm. landscape to look at while you were here that you're most inspired uh, by? I'm not going to commit <laughs> to a favorite. <laughs> everything, everything was beautiful um, and interesting. Because uh, I, I basically, um, when I focus on the landscape, it's it's more of my my reaction to the landscape. Um, all of the details, all the all of the, the the form and content will be useful later in the studio. But it's more of my interaction with the with the landscape, my um, interpretation of it. Yeah. So. It wasn't anything particular, it was the whole, the whole thing was, uh, was that, very inspiring. Yeah, mm -hmm. that gut reaction. And you, you can kind of see that gut reaction that you get from your landscapes whenever you view them by seeing your paintings. Um, Linda uses these amazingly bold colors, these large graphic shapes in her, in her paintings. Um, and it's really wonderful to see, and you can kind of see how you're having that gut reaction to those forms that you're coming across while you're right, in the area. Right, right. Um, mm -hmm. Would you call this a certain style your paintings? How would you describe the style of your paintings? Well, it, it's always hard to, 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 to give a, a style a particular <laughs> definition. Um, my work has been sometimes defined as um, magic realism, uh, surrealistic. Uh, there's also um, a certain genre of, of landscape uh, painters that um, were defined as regionalists. They, they paint what they, what they see where they live. But um, it's again, it's a it's an interpretation of um, sort of my emotional reaction to to a particular scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, not only do you do these amazing um, paintings, but you also focus on photography as well. Right. Right. And I found, um, for me personally, it was a drastic difference between your photography and the paintings mm. that you had that those big bold colors in your paintings are mostly black and white are your photographs right, and right. more of a um, of a drastic lonely landscape that you seem mm -hmm. to have for mm -hmm. your for your photographs the majority of the ones that I was able to see of yours were taken in um, far off locations inside of Alaska staying here inside right. of the state like right. you're like you were speaking mm -hmm. of but going to these remote villages and remote locations in the state mm -hmm. how did you get to all these locations it seems like you've been doing an artist in residence program all across the entire state <laughs> <laughs> it kind of feels like it. I've been on fi five trips in the last uh, five months, but um, not all in Alaska. But um, there's a wonderful program. The Alaska State Council in the Arts um, has a program called the Ar Artists in Schools Residency. And um, they send uh, working artists, uh, professional artists, uh, out into, the, out into uh, sc uh, schools in Anchorage and out in, uh, in villages as well. And uh, we, we spend a week or two weeks working with the kids um, on a particular art project. And also, just um, the kids are exposed to uh, what uh, a working artist's uh, life is like and what they do. And uh, I think it's, you know, it's very inspiring for them, and it's very inspiring for me to, to visit these remote villages um, on, the, on the Bering Sea, um, St. Lawrence Island. Um, you know, from Kobuk. I was in Kobuk. Um, uh, so it's yeah, it's it's a, been one a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. Have you um, happened to think of any ways that you can bring this experience here at Denali to those remote villages that you visit with your students, or even to your students back in Anchorage? Mm -hmm. How are you going to bring this experience back to them and back to your home? Mm -hmm. Well, um, 
I definitely, you know, once I get back to Anchorage, um, we'll head to the studio. So I will I'll be sharing um, uh, what uh, Denali has ins is inspired um, me. You know, my, my work will, will definitely uh, reflect that. And, um, you know, when I go visit um, another village, hopefully I'll, I'll have another chance to go. Uh, I, will, I will share this experience. Uh, and I think the kids will be inspired in, in knowing that they can do that as well and okay. visit. It's right here um, close to them. They exactly. Can it's part of their, their, their state. Their, their state. Mm -hmm. Now, I read an inkling that you're trying to expand out to a new medium as well, besides just painting and photography. Glasswork is... Um, Stained glass. I oh, heard oh, that's that you right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you received oh, a new medium. What? Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> not acrylics. <laughs> no, just oils. <laughs> yeah. um, but yes, yes. Uh, there's a there's a, a a possibility. I I just had a a, a residency in um, Munich, Germany. Um, in in June and um, in a uh, architectural glass uh, uh, studio, oh. and they um, are interested in artists. Um, any medium, uh, taking their work and translating that work to glass. Mm -hmm. So um, on my visit there, we looked at my uh, paintings and, and photographs and, and uh, made samples of my work um, in, in glass and in mosaic. And you know, I'm hoping, hoping to have a, a future uh, public project, something, something big um, yeah. in, in glass in the future. That would be wonderful mm -hmm. to see it transformed in a whole new light, right, right. <laughs> with that light coming in through the window. Well, we have a Facebook question that just came in um, from our online viewers who are viewing. Um, it's from Graham from Anchorage, from your home city right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And he wants to know, um, will you work extensively from memory, photography, or both whenever you get back to Anchorage? Okay. Actually, um, I will be working with with both, with both. Um, I use I use the photography um, as a as a reference for the paintings, mm -hmm. um, uh, just to give me an idea of, of, of form and shape. Um, but I think I think memory is is um, important. The emotion, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, I am not really able to, to, to make an exact copy of a, of a photograph. Um, it doesn't, doesn't work that way uh, for me uh, creatively. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's both. Yeah. And, I, and I, just photography in itself um, is, is a yeah. pleasure. Is that wonderful photograph all just by itself without having to change it to a new form? Right, right. Yes, absolutely. Well, wonderful. Um, let's see. See any other questions that we have here from our Facebook folks? Um, actually, one of our our rangers here inside of the park was wondering whenever you um, are going through your creative process, whenever you're considering what to paint, how do you approach your work? What is the very first step that you go through whenever you are approaching a new landscape mm -hmm. like we have here in Denali? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, when I when I started painting, usually there's been weeks or so that I've just sort of thought about a particular idea, let it, let it uh, um, sort of sit in my mind for a while. And I basically go to the canvas um, without, a, without a plan. I have, I have um, an idea of colors and, mm. and a, a very vague idea of what the landscape's going to look like. And once I get the paint on the, on the canvas and move the paint around a little bit, they start su suggesting um, uh, landforms, and those coincide with some of my memories of experiences. For example, Denali, I start moving stuff around, I see things, but it, a lot of it happens on, on, on the canvas. Now, so there's not a, a plan. Yeah, a <laughs> there's no plan. <laughs> no <fourth time. laughs> That's okay, letting the creative mm -hmm. process happen, right? Then exactly. There. Nice. exactly. Um, do you think that your medium of oil, do you think using oil painting really helps you be able to do that? You can manipulate the paints and move it around? And why did you mm -hmm. choose oil? Was it for that okay. reason? Uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Oil is um, very forgiving, uh, un unlike acrylics. In acrylics, you lay your paint down, it dries, and you're, you're pretty much committed to, to that mark. Whereas oils, you can move around, um, you can blend, uh, work with transparencies, uh, and you can also change what you've, you've painted. If you've decided to erase something, you just move it and uh, start over. 
Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful, Linda. I want to thank you so much for joining us today, for allowing us to hear a little thank bit you. more about your process. I've and had I a wonderful time. Yeah. It's been great. I, I wasn't ready to go back. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I think we never are after coming mm -hmm. back out of the back country. Yeah. Um, it's wonderful to have these artists in residence here. I want to thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful afternoon. Please feel free to come back and see our other amazing programs we have here at Denali live stream events. Thank you and have a great day.